back. So really where we come in at the Liverpool City region is in terms of creating markets, creating development, and also responding to some of our key challenges. And our sort of starting point for this is something that I would suspect most cities and city regions, certainly in the UK and probably around the world now, is putting out there, which is the response back to climate emergency. Um, this is moving at a, a serious pace for all of us now um, in terms of how much we're going to have to do and how quickly these things are going to start to move. Um, we've got a target of net zero carbon by 2040. Um, again, most places will have a similar target or, or different date. What that generates, though, now for all of us is a series of opportunities. Um, we're going to do things. We have to invest. We have to seek money. We have to seek investment. We have to seek technology. We have to seek expertise. At the same time, we're also developing the same principles. We have expertise, we have technology, we have or ways of doing things that can be taken overseas as well. This is a true global industry. Um, that's just who we are. So the six local authorities that make up Liverpool City Region. Um, we sit under a combined authority with a metro mayor. So we have an awful lot of de uh, devolution powers um, that have come into us as a city region. Um, it's taken us really a while to actually pull that together as, a, as an area, as a concept, and also to get that message out um, into an international market, who we actually are. Some of those names of those areas are probably not familiar to many people outside of the Northwest. Um, the one that is familiar, obviously, and are the brand that we use most, obviously, is Liverpool. Um, that's the point about net zero carbon. This is just some of the elements, and I would guess most people will put this up. If you say it quick enough and walk away of net zero carbon, that's okay. It's just kind of going to happen. We're now really getting into some of the really detailed elements of what is that going to look like, and these are huge transformational projects. Some of those things that are on there, that's just a flavour, but these are almost, again, one-liners. But when you look at what that means, wholesale change in your transport system, in your energy system, you know, in your business, in your industry, that shopping list that that creates mounts up. Um, and that's the scale of the challenge. And in terms of spend and in terms of investment going forward, I would suspect that most areas and most city regions they will have that list, but also the size and scale of that. The issue as well there is about joining these things up. Because again, for we, you know, we're neighbours with Phillips area. Um, who also have a similar list and start to look and say, well, how does this work together? How can you actually start to collaborate to make these things a reality? Um, offshore wind is obviously something that um, a lot of people in this area, in the north and you know, across the northwest, have been rightly proud of. You know, some of us were involved 10 years ago when offshore wind, yeah, it's a bit niche, too expensive, too difficult. Nobody's really done it before at any kind of scale that we've heard of. Denmark, yeah, Denmark have done stuff, but I'm not really that interested. The transformation over a very short number of years to actually get to a point now where you know, the number of international delegations that come through, the amount of effort and the, the you know, positioning. And I think that the really critical part to that then is the confidence that's given um, both areas that you can actually be genuinely world class at something and something that people want to travel from around the world to come and see. Uh, but also the critical element there is being able to give the companies that have been involved in that those new export markets. Um, we were very good and understandably at bringing those um, investments in. And we have seen, if you look at those numbers for all of us, I would suggest that the kind of billions of pounds that have been invested but again, who was behind that? Which companies, mainly foreign developers, mainly foreign supply chains, mainly foreign investors. And that's been great, and that's delivered. You, you know, we can all see the physical manifestation of that, of that delivery. But it's then a case of what else can we do from a UK perspective to make sure our companies can start to, to play an active part in that. And that's not as a, some kind of begging bowl. You should do this because you're operating in the UK we need to have those companies and those structures in place because you use those because they're the best. They are as good as anybody else that you've got. And that's, again, one of our critical challenges. Um, moving on then from offshore wind, you now see in sea other areas. So things like hydrogen. And again, it's about almost performing that same trick that we've done with offshore wind. It's actually understanding there's a huge market potential for it because it solves a series of problems that we've got around large-scale industry decarbonisation of heat, 
so that's really where we take uh, we take this. But again, it's bringing in and utilising a lot of existing companies. So suddenly, you know, are you a low carbon company? Do you involve in, in low carbon or climate change? Well, no, I'm a chemicals process company. Well, what sorts of chemicals do you process and how do you do it? Well, actually, we work in hydrogen. The expertise all the way from how do you make the stuff, but increasingly into, you know, we're, we're just about to deploy the first fleet of hydrogen buses. And what that's done is that's acted as a catalyst to bring in um, several companies who are now actually developing that technology for us. And they've now created factories, research and development centres, um, and put us in touch with a, a much bigger global market. And you start to become a known as a centre for something, another piece of technology. All of those add up. Um, but again, the, I think that the offshore wind is a reference point. It's a calling card for all of us, for Humberside, for Chelsea. You know, it, it makes a difference. It gives you that ability to show for a piece of new technology, which has a chance to scale. Um, that's just... In a nutshell, what we're up to at the moment, again, Phillips area is in the northwest. Northeast can do a, and Humberside can do a similar map. But the point here is about bringing multiple technologies um, together. So we need huge volumes of clean power to power the hydrogen production. The hydrogen production then can be used to maintain and keep our industries, our energy intensive sector industries, um, viable. It also gives us new opportunities in terms of transport and travel. Those elements come together, and it's how you put that. And again, a pitch paints a thousand is equivalent to a thousand words. You know, to go back out to the international markets, we need the ability to showcase that. Interestingly, we had um, we worked with um, South Korean government on smart grid projects about five years ago. And again, back to your point about building relationships. The relationships that were built with South Korea have now merged, merged across, and South Korean government were with us about two weeks ago. And the city of Pusan put up a map that, unbeknownst to us, looked an identical copy to that. Whoever copied who, I don't know. But that ability to suddenly see a, a, you know, a pattern and a, a connection, so it's kind of international markets. Um, I won't go into too much detail on this, but again, it's that ability to, you know, to export. The kind of trucks, the trains that you're seeing in there with the kind of companies that are involved are taking those overseas um, and working closely with all the various parts of government, not just DIT, but with Bayes and other government departments to actually make that happen. Um, <laughs> yeah, you always have to have a picture of our mayor with his shiny red bus. Um, but again, it's, the point here is that is coming through. So that's, again, building. So it's be using locally produced hydrogen with now locally produced buses um, with technology that's now that same company who's developing those buses are actually in Indonesia this week. Um, so already the markets start to move. Um, and then finally, the last of the, of the new things on our shopping list, which is Mersey Tidal Project. Um, and again, this is looking at building on the success we've had um, with offshore wind and other forms of renewable generation. This is the next one on the list. Um, around all our UK coasts, it's harnessing the power of the tides in the same way we've done for offshore wind, we've done for solar, um, harnessing the power of the moon. Um, but again, this is large scale and this is starting to think um, in an ambitious level that previously, you know, these are difficult difficult projects to do. Again, back to the point, again, who's done it before? Has anybody done it before? How many of those have you got? There are some global examples, but relatively few. But it's about really starting to move that in. Um, and then finally, that's part of the element to this, is, again, with Tidal, it's the kind of things that we need. We have a list in the same way that Ersted and Emma's team have provided us with lists in the past. You know, this is what we need. And actually, a lot of those elements are probably very similar. So if you've got companies that have worked on one project um, in, say, offshore wind, there suddenly becomes another market for them to go. And that's critical for all of this, because we need a consistency. There are, in big infrastructure, there are peaks and troughs. Um, businesses need a consistency. They need as many markets that they can go at, and new and emerging markets as, as one matures and another one comes along. And that's really where it goes.